Robots are starting to pop up everywhere, with companies claiming that their cutting-edge technology can cut down on labor, fertilizer, and pesticide costs while benefiting yield and sustainability. But are they ready for the fields of Ontario, and how will they work for your operation? In today's video, we're going to look at how we've been attempting to adapt them to work in the Holland Marsh, and then we're also going to look at other robots working in other parts of Ontario. To get started, let's look at this robot, the Nio Oreo. The Oreo is a tool-carrying robot from Nio Technologies in France. Its simple design includes a three-point hitch to give growers the flexibility to attach whatever implements are most useful to their operation. Last year, we built a small band sprayer for it, which has two tanks, both over 200 liters. After seeding, we used it to water directly over the seeds, and later in the season, we were able to spray the crop with one tank, while simultaneously spraying a different product between the rows from the other tank, such as a non-selective herbicide. This year, we tweaked the design to increase reliability, coverage, and adaptability. We also used a cultivator we already had, attached to a camera-guided hitch made by Tillet & Hay. The camera identifies the crop, allowing the electric mount to shift accordingly and track the rows. We found the lithium batteries can keep the robot going for up to 8 hours, or around 6 hours if you're running at its full speed of 5.5 km an hour. One of the strong points of this robot is the mapping. It's easy to take the beacon off the robot to make A-B lines, or you can attach the beacon to your tractor, truck, or equipment and make a map as you're seating or whatever else. This is the second year of this three-year project, so we're hoping we can continue to adapt this robot going forward. Next year, we're planning to improve on what we already have, and carry out even more jobs with the Oreo, like seeding carrots and beets using electric vacuum seeders from Wizard. Ideally, we won't need to use a tractor at all until harvest. If you're interested, Nio also makes a smaller robot, the Oz, and two for vineyards, the Joe and the Ted. The other robot we have promises to seed and weed right out of the box. The Farmdroid FD20 from Denmark is also electric, but charges itself using a giant solar panel. We were worried about how much power the panel would generate, but when we were seeding, the robot was able to run non-stop right through the night. Part of this is because we were seeding very, very slowly, at around 255 meters per hour on our first run to make sure the robot did a good job in the grower field it was working in. The FD20 geotags every spot it seeds, allowing it to come back after seeding and weed within the row, avoiding the crops. For the first year of this project, we opted to seed four single rows at once, with seeds 3.4 centimeters apart within the row. This achieved higher plant density, closer to what growers achieve with a double row, but the spacing was too close for the robot to actuate its arms to weed between the plants. Instead, we cranked up the speed to about 600 meters per hour and used the passive weeding tools that came with it metal wires that skimmed just below the soil surface. In the second year of this project, we used a 3D printer to create new seeding discs. This allowed the robot to seed in clusters of three 12 centimeters apart. With less strain on the seed valve, we were able to more than double the speed, up to 550 meters per hour. The weeding tooling was also improved, with metal knives that were far more effective at killing weeds. The robot was also changed from three wheels to four, allowing it to stay out in the field longer without crushing onions. Going forward, we're hoping to mount eight seeding units instead of four. This should let the robot seed two beds at once and cover even more ground. Finally, we've also been working with a company from New Brunswick called Piquetta. They offer a product called the Lens, short for Leaf Evaluated Nutrient System. This system is currently being used in potato fields to give real-time estimates on 13 different macro and micronutrients, just by scanning the leaves of a plant. At the station, we've been using the piquetta to scan onion leaves, then send them off to a lab to help train the model. Preliminary results are promising, and show that the piquetta technology should work effectively in onions, but we still need to collect and scan a lot more samples. We're also hoping to build a model for other crops, such as carrots and celery, and eventually, we'd like to mount the system to a robot to analyze samples as the robot works. Outside of the station, there are other robots working around Ontario you may be interested in. Many are relatively simple platforms that can be modified and used however you'd like, such as the Romeo and similar variants from Karechi Innovations. This one was equipped with electric mowers. A much larger platform from the University of Waterloo is called the Watano Truck, which shares some of the technology from their autonomous bus on campus, the Watano Bus. There's also the Agro Intelli Robotti, a large tool-carrying robot with a diesel generator that was working to seed and weed sugar beets this past year. An even larger autonomous platform is the Raven Omnipower that can be set up to seed, spray, and spread fertilizer. The laser reader from Carbon Robotics has also begun working in Ontario. 
While the technology is impressive and also improving rapidly, it's an expensive piece of kit which can be hard to justify in Ontario, where it can only run for part of the year. There's also a risk of the laser starting a fire in the high organic matter soil in the marsh, which can be difficult to effectively mitigate. Finally, commercial drones are continuing to get larger, carry a heavier payload, and run longer without needing a battery swap, although they still aren't approved to be used for spraying pesticides in a commercial setting. Thank you for watching this short update on the work we've been doing with Agrobotics. The technology has improved drastically this past year, and we're looking forward to further optimizing what we have and testing new products next year. Hopefully, it won't be long until more of this tech is market ready and we can start benefiting growers.